And he said, well, are you called to still honour your five album deal, but do it on your own? I was like, oh. So I went and bought a bagel, called my mum. I was like, mum, what do you reckon? <laughs> you did a big gig this week. Was it yes. Thursday night? Thursday night, yep. Shepherd's Bush Empire. Kind of looking back over three decades, which is like a worry. 30 years anniversary. Isn't that crazy? I know. I know. I still feel pretty young, but apparently I'm not anymore. Well, no, no. <laughs> what you were was you were a child. I was literally a child when I started. Well, you were. I mean, because I, I was reading, there's a thing in The Guardian today. I think it's The Guardian or The Times, yeah. one of those things. And you're talking about, uh, what, you're 15 and you're walking down the street. Yeah, 15, just turning 16, walking down the street and... And some sort of bouncers from this club said, girls, do you want to come in? And us being 15-year-old girls was like, absolutely, if we're allowed in. Yeah, we are definitely old enough. And Dennis Inglesby was in there, who was A&R at Polydor Records. And he was with Pete Tong before Pete was, you know, the Pete Tong we know and love now. Yeah. Um, he was just DJing in the milk bar all those years ago. And he was there with him. <sighs> And what did he, he just saw you dancing and thought you'd look and then he, because he kind of known you could sing. No, he's, yeah, he just said to me, is there any chance you can sing? Um, I was like, yeah, I, I actually, I went to stage school. It's what I wanted to do. So I must have just been having the time of my life with the music, dancing away to CC Peniston, you know, finally or something. <laughs> <laughs> One of the songs I was loving at that moment in time. And um, yeah, and, and but he, he was really good because I went home, told my parents. They were like, first of all, why was you in a nightclub? And secondly, why are you giving anybody your number, especially a grown man? Um, and I said, no, honestly, it's all legit. Rang him and he was genuinely A&R Records. And he spoke to my mum and dad and came down. So he did everything yeah, yeah, completely yeah, yeah, yeah. by the book. You know, it's all above board, but it was exciting. And everyone kind of, everyone does remember Eternal. Yeah. But I think what people don't remember is how huge Eternal were. Like, you were massive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you know what it is when they turn around and say things like, you know, you look at record sales now and they say, oh, that first year just in the UK alone, we did 1.5 million hard copies of that first album. I mean, <laughs> no, it's crazy. Like, most people <laughs> must have had access to that album. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's a lot of people. They like, yeah. actually walked into the shops and bought it. It's sort of not now where we press a little button on our phone and yeah, yeah, get yeah, a few yeah. songs that we like. So, um, yeah, Eternal was a big deal. It really was. And, you know, and, and America, you know, Eternal was yep. in America and everything. Yeah, top you know, 10 over there and stay and sort of, yeah, we did a world tour. Do you know, it was, it was, I look back now with memories and you don't really realise when you're in it. And I look back now and think the gigs we played and the things we achieved as a band were pretty incredible. And yeah. it's so different to how music is out now. And in that interview, you were saying how actually the four of you stayed kind of separate while you were in it. You never you never quite bonded in that way that you imagine. You know, from the outside looking in, you kind of think the three of you were thrust into that. That would yeah. be such a that would be such a kind of glue. But in fact there wasn't much glue. I think you've got to like so me and Kelly were at school together, so we're always close and, yeah. and friends. Um but I think it's like one of those things, it's you're away a lot, you're working a lot, your schedule's crazy and you're you're all there together, but at the same time I think it's really important that you all have your lives as well, which is really hard when you're young and in a band and you barely get a day off so and also you don't know what your life is no and you're exactly I hadn't really built a life for myself yeah. that, that was my life I, I didn't really have a life outside of being in Eternal at all and yeah. I think back in the 90s to be in the pop music sort of industry I'm not sure you had a life or you were allowed a life at that stage you were just a product you really were, in, yeah. but in a good way. I, I don't complain about that at all because without all of that hard work and that effort put in, I most probably wouldn't be still, you know, sat here yeah, today yeah, yeah. talking about music. But then you make that big decision and you go solo. Yeah. So, like, did people tell you who Louise Redknapp was as a solo artist or did you figure it out? You know what I mean? <laughs> I because, because it, as you say, you were so young. Yeah. You just had that experience of Eternal. So how did you, how did you find out you know, what music do I want to do? All that sort of stuff. I, I feel that it took time. If I'm really honest, I, I'd love to say, oh, no, I had a really clear vision. I didn't. I sat there with, um, you know, the MD of EMI Records and he said, well, you've got a five album deal. I said, look, I'm really homesick. I'm really struggling to travel to the length that we are. I was, you know, still in my late teens, um, early 20s. And he said, well, are you called to still honour your five album deal, but do it on your own? I was like, oh. So I went and bought a bagel, called my mum. I was like, mum, what do you reckon? Um, and I think I think then it was the departure from being in Eternal. And it was at that real pop sort of princess era where you can big pop songs, big videos. And I'd say if really 
on Heavy Love and even maybe the new tracks now on The Greatest Hitch, I feel that I'm finally making music that I actually really love, like Super Magic. I love that song. I love a bass and funky guitar. So I feel like I'm just almost it's taken me this long to go, right, I know exactly what I want to do. <laughs> 